Welcome back to the program. As we honor the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the 50th anniversary of his I Have a Dream speech, we decided to go back to his old neighborhood right here in Atlanta on Auburn Avenue. Many tourists would be surprised to see how much the neighborhood has deteriorated over the years, but there are a few people trying to do something about it. Here's CBS Atlanta's reporter Mike Paluska with the story. There are dozens of statues and murals honoring Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. throughout the city of Atlanta. Across the country, there are hundreds of roads named after him, more than we can count. And he has a national holiday. Right here at his birth home, there is a resurgence to revitalize the community he grew up in. There is a calm, a peace that washes over you at Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s National Historic Site. So even a strong sense of respect for a man who died in 1968 fighting for civil rights. His neighborhood on Auburn Avenue is hallowed ground where thousands of tourists flood its streets every day to feel the spirit of the man who changed history. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. They don't miss my brother, of course. Christine King Ferris, Dr. King's older sister, was also born at 501 Auburn Avenue. We were just a part of the neighborhood. It was home, and I think that if one goes there, you get a pretty good idea of what it was like growing up. The neighborhood housed the elite of Atlanta's African-American society, but for all its rich history, there is a darkness. an urban decay that stares you right in the face. Boarded up homes, graffiti, homeless fighting addictions, prostitutes and drug dealers, the things off the beaten path tourists don't see. Just a few blocks north of here, we have 700 families living in abject poverty. Average income about $3,000 a year. Kwanzaa Hall is the Atlanta City Council member for District 2. We've got to do something different going forward. The historic district of the Old Fourth Ward has seen its fair share of challenges. There was a time when no one could walk down the streets if you weren't from over here. Hall works closely with the Historic District Development Corporation, their mission to revitalize the area. But despite their work, the area isn't thriving. You have to ask yourself the question, wow, you know, hmm, what's missing? Why haven't we figured this out? Why haven't we had the same level of change and growth? Crime is a possible answer to that question. Since January 1st of this year, Atlanta police have received nearly 800 calls for service. Larceny, aggravated assault, burglary, and auto theft, just to name a few. All are within a half mile radius of Dr. King's birth home. This used to be a nice neighborhood and then it turned to be kind of bad, you know. Katie Taylor's lived here for more than 50 years, and she hates to think what the area would be like if Dr. King wasn't born here. Oh, it might have been the, gone down to nothing. <laughs> for all the societal ills that plague the area, the dilapidated homes that scar the landscape, change is on the way. Buildings are getting raised, homes rebuilt and restored, but Hall says it will take more than just bricks and mortar to cure this problem. We should look at it as the harsh reality that our society, not just Atlanta, but our entire society, still must figure out how to deal with. Grand openings for businesses where buildings were vacant are popping up. A new streetcar project will finally connect Dr. King's neighborhood with the rest of Atlanta. A connection Hall has fingers crossed will benefit the future of the city Dr. King called home and raise more awareness to these serious problems that still need to be solved. This is a legacy that we all must keep and we must, we must kind of bear this torch going forward and pass it on to the next generation. This home directly across the street from Dr. King's is a prime example of what needs to be done, but the city has its hands tied. It is privately owned, the owners don't have the money to fix it up, and they are not willing to sell. Maybe at some point in the future, tourist dollars could help fix up homes like these. In Old Fourth Ward, Mike Paluska, CBS, Atlanta News. Wow. Well, Kwanzaa Hall is the Atlanta City Council member for District 2. Thank you for joining us. You were involved in that report as well. You know the area better than anybody. Uh, take us back to the problems and where we're going. Well, I mean, you know, it's like any urban core neighborhood in America that had fallen into disrepair as many people left the city um, over the course of 
several decades, and now we've decided to revitalize. And it really started with Coretta Scott King and her work um, to revitalize the area around Dr. King's birth home through the Historic District Development Corporation back in um, the late 70s, early 80s. And that time period really kicked off the revitalization of his birth home and then single family homes, house by house, block by block, street by street. And as you get to about 80% completion, it becomes very difficult to acquire lots or to even renovate houses because of stringent design guidelines. It's a historic district, um, working within high pro land costs, the economic downturn. So we've had to work through a lot of challenges. And then of course, just a neighborhood that you're trying to put on the map um, that did not have um, the great investment that we're seeing happening in neighborhoods around there, whether you look to Emmett Park to the east or areas like Morningside, mm -hmm. Virginia Highlands, Ansley Park. Um, so we're excited now and optimistic that we are on the right track. We have some great initiatives underway. We are updating the design guidelines after more than 30 years of them being the same. Uh, we still want to protect the hist historic integrity of the community, but at the same time, we've got to make it more palatable for investment dollars to come in. We are working very closely with the uh, Main Street program uh, through the National Trust for Historic Preservation to create um, an entity called Sweet Auburn Works, which will, which will work on um, all the things that will make this community that truly vibrant place, like you see in Madison, downtown Madison, or U Street in Washington, D.C. Um, we're also optimistic about the streetcar investment. It's already bringing tons of people to just see what's happening down that way, but I think when the construction is done, that connection um, extended out to the Beltline and out to the west side of town into um, CNN and further even to the Atlanta University Center will be the type of um, catalyst that brings a, a whole new level, maybe billions of dollars in investment. The international community surely has a high level of interest in helping to restore some of the historic buildings, in particular one that was on the interview. So I think your story mm -hmm. helped to catalyze that conversation. Um, and we're just really trying to work as a team. And this, this is not easy work, um, but we know we have um, a few more days before the 50th anniversary uh, is upon us, and I think this is the right type of work that a city um, that raised Dr. King, uh, a place where he not only worked but also is now buried, um, that we should do all that we can mm -hmm. to honor his great legacy, to revitalize that street, um, Auburn Avenue and, and Edgewood where the streetcar um, goes, but also even look at Martin Luther King Drive and do some things to kind of do a facelift and, and make sure that, that we are really um, restoring this legacy and presenting it in the best light. We have millions of people coming to visit, um, but their experience has not been the best experience, and I think we can do better um, by ourselves and by our city and by the legacy. Yeah, Kwanzaa, you know, I think most Atlantans would agree, as well as tourists, that we have this jewel yes. here on Auburn Avenue with the legacy of Dr. King. And there are a lot of things that need to be done to make it a more enjoyable experience. But we have that jewel. And so to you, what does this revitalization mean personally? You know, my father was the youngest member of Dr. King's staff. His name was Leon Hall from 1963 to 1968. And he's deceased now, but it would mean so much. Um, to see this entire place complete in my tenure. All those homes renovated, all the vacant lots um, filled with some type of park or active green space or a house or, or some type of office space. I think we can do this. It's not that many left and I'm committed to doing it as a councilman for the area but also um, I thought about my grandmother who attended the March on Washington and all of the folks who went there, her name was Martina McCain and, mm -hmm. and they, she came from Chicago but she spent her life being a progressive, fighting for freedom and jobs, as so many other people did. And, and I think it's time that we in our city and our country um, acknowledge that this is the important work that we should be doing and focus on the right things. Fantastic. Now, if people want to volunteer, they want to you know, give uh, money or whatever to this, this purpose, how do they do that? How do they reach you? Let's start the conversation at City Hall. Um, they can surely email me at khall at atlantaga.gov or 404-330-6038, and of course, on social media, at District 2 ATL, on Facebook as well as Twitter. Kwanzaa Hall, thank City you. Council Atlanta, thank you so much, District 2. Keep up the good work in the community. We appreciate you joining us. And when we come back, we tackle the issue of race relations. We talk about how much things have changed in the past 50 years and where we go from here. That's next.